Hi everyone, in this video we'll be going over arrays. I hope you all are excited. Okay, so what are arrays? We can think about arrays as, very specifically, a numbered sequence of memory boxes. More intuitively though, an array is basically just a list that contains one type of element, okay? In the example below, we can see we here have an int array containing integers. So some properties about arrays. An array is of a fixed length, which means you can't change the length of an array after you instantiate it, okay? If we wanna access elements in an array, we use indices zero through length minus one. Okay, so how do we actually create arrays in Java syntax? We could see here on the left that we have three ways to create an array. And we'll be walking through an example later, so we'll be diving into a bit more depth here. And the main benefit of using arrays is that random access is very fast. So what is random access? Suppose I have an array and I wanna access a random index, okay? That's called random access. And it turns out in arrays, this is constant time because it's basically just going to this spot in memory, okay? On the other hand, we'll talk about linked lists later, and their random access isn't as fast. <laughs> All right, let's walk through a quick example just to gain some intuition on how arrays work. So on the left, we'll have a lot of lines of code, and we'll just be walking through them line by line. And I definitely recommend just stopping the video here, just walking through all of these lines of code right now and trying them on your own before I dive through them now, okay? So the first step here is we instantiate a variable z to the value null, and we declare two variables x and y. Then what we're going to do is assign the variable x to an int array consisting of one through five. Then what we're going to do is say y is equal to x. So at this point, pause the video and try to figure out what's going to happen after we say y is equal to x, okay? So what's going to happen is that we're gonna say y is going to be equal to x, which means the value of y is going to be equal to the value of x. So the value of x is a pointer to this array, so that is also going to be the value of y, okay? Then what we're going to do is assign x to a new int array, and we're going to assign y to an int array with three elements. But this array doesn't have any values, so what are we gonna do for the values? We're gonna use the default values and the default value for an int is zero, okay? The next thing we're gonna do is create an array of length zero. How could we do that? Well, this is just the empty array, okay? Then finally here, we're going to say that int xl is going to be equal to x dot length. Well, what is the length of x? The length of x is five, so xl's value is going to be five, okay? And now we're gonna show that I can create arrays of different types. Instead of the int arrays here, let's create an array of strings. And I'm gonna say the string at index four is ketchup. Perfect. Finally, we're gonna create another ar array b and we're gonna execute this line called system.arraycopy. So what array copy does is it has two arrays, let's say array one and array two, and it copies some elements from array one into array two, okay? It could be replaced with a for loop, but it's a little more efficient in practice. So you may be looking at this array copy function call and wondering why are there so many arguments, right? It's a little intimidating. So Let's kind of break down what all of these arguments are. The first argument is the array where the elements are coming from, okay? The second argument is the index that we're gonna start taking elements from. The next array is the array that we're copying the elements to. This three is the index that we're gonna start putting the elements in that new array at. And this last argument, I'll try to guess, it's the size. Uh, not the size, it's the number of elements that we're actually copying over in this transaction. Okay, so pause here, try to figure out what's going to happen when I execute this line of code and what we will see after you paused. 
is that we're taking 9 and 10 from b because it's at index 0, two elements, and we're putting them at x at indices 3 and 4 because the 3 is here. And we see they've indeed changed to 9 and 10. OK, so this is all for the arrays walkthrough. I hope you all found this helpful and stay tuned for the next video.